bombs away. Five. Ten. Fifteen. demonstration and the biggest continental atomic detonation in the history of the world. That, of course, was the shock wave. And looking into the cloud, you see the orange, the brown, the dirty black, and the fringed white. Beautiful, tremendous, and angry spectacle on this waste and barren desert. Now, here's Fred Henry. We're at an interesting point as an ice cap will form on top of this uh, cloud as it goes billowing up uh, higher and higher. It came, as you saw, as a great flash was about ten parallel white almost vapor trails along the horizontal on its left side and then exploded into uh, not the flashy uh, red, brilliant red that we had uh, been led to believe, but it just seemed to hover there for a moment and then it went up and now it is pouring into the, uh, like a donut, completely uh, unfolding itself, a huge uh, puff on a pipe almost and the red and the brown is now tumbling under as white smoke comes down from the top and the dust across this entire uh, basin goes uh, up almost like a battleship. And it looks very much like there's a battleship in this basin with a huge uh, white smoke trail above it and then this tremendous donut up there that goes higher and higher. It's an absolutely a fabulous sight. Fred, just looking away from the beautiful mushroom that's turning into that fabulous white now, and down to that ugly gray all across the floor of this valley, you can't help but realize that you could put right inside this proving ground from where we are the entire island of Manhattan, New York City. And if you look at that dirty, ugly, gray base, you see what that particular weapon can do. And certainly, as we've been told here many times during the past few days by Mr. Gordon Dean, the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, General Joseph Mills, who was in charge of the airdrop today, the enemy certainly has similar weapons. The cost is now at about 35,000 feet. An ice cap is forming at its top. Beautiful white cloud in a clear blue sky, dirty gray bottom, the proving ground. Uh, down on our lower camera, uh, I see Grant Holcomb and I believe Hugh Bailey, president of United Press. So this is Fred Henry now switching down to Grant Holcomb. Still a lot of dirty dust out there, isn't it, Hugh? Yes, I've seen a lot of bombardments, but nothing like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Hugh Bailey, uh, a gentleman that uh, I'm apt to run into most any place in the world. Uh, his byline is familiar to all of you. He's the president of the United Press, and uh, like uh, yourself and uh, myself, he too saw his first atomic detonation this morning. Uh, Hugh, what did you think of it? Well, it was, of course, one of the most uh, tremendous things the eye of man could witness. And if there were a city out there now, 
instead of just being a few smoke plumes here and there, to be devastated, filled with dead people. Not many dying people. Most of them would be dead, I expect. That's right. What uh, What did you think of that uh, that shock wave? Did that catch you unawares as it did me? The heat wave did. <laughs> that was the first one, because that came almost immediately after the fireball. I expected uh, to feel the shock shortly after the fireball, but you remember we saw the fireball? Yes. And almost at the same time, it was just like opening the door of a furnace, and you felt yourself slapped in the face with that heat wave. Well, after that heat wave, I forgot all about the the, the, the shock wave, and it really caught me yeah, off. Yeah, well, if you weren't looking for it, it might give you quite a shove. It did me. I sat back, uh, backed up against the table there. Most of you we were pretty well braced around where I was sitting. And, of course, it gave us warning of its arrival over the loudspeaker here, down where I was. But when it came, it was as if somebody had given you a combination shove and slap. Well, one other thing uh, that uh, interests me uh, a lot about uh, your coverage here, how are you getting your copy out of here? The copy goes out of here over a signal core circuit to Las Vegas, where it's hooked up with our bureau there and goes right on the United Press lease wire. That's from, uh, that's from right over there with the signal right core. Right over here where this GI is, uh, is sitting punching that teletype is where our copy goes out. By wireless down to Las Vegas and then onto the United Press lease wire there and right into New York and around the world. Well, I never expected to see this in the middle of a desert. No, I guess not. Now, just looking at that atomic cloud still floating away over there, it now looks as innocent as any other cloud in the sky, doesn't it? It certainly does. You see, you, can, you can't tell from the other clouds, even if you're a scientist, I don't suppose. All the color has gone out of it. All those strange uh, shades of orange and red and the glow is all gone, so it floats along quite harmlessly. I wonder what would happen if somebody flew an airplane through that by mistake. <laughs> I don't know whether they do that Maybe or not. It's too high. High. Maybe it's too high. I suppose it's considerably high. I do know that they track that cloud with uh, B-29s all over the United States uh, until it dissipates itself. Well, it's well on its way now, away from us. I'm glad to see that. For a while, it took a turn in our direction there. Do you remember? <laughs> it sure did. Well, Mr. Bailey, it's been very pleasant chatting with you here. It's good to see you again, and I hope to see you later Thank in the you, day. Man. Fine. Oh. Thank you very much. Now, let's go back up and see what friend Henry's got up there on top of the... Uh, the Monkey Rock. This, uh, of course, is Mr. William Lawrence of the New York Times. Uh, Bill is a very distinguished gentleman with us here today because he has not only seen the last atomic uh, bomb uh, dropped in the history of mankind, but he saw the first one, that one down in New Mexico. How many years ago was that, That Bill? was on July 16, 1945, Grant. You were the only newsman uh, around at that the time. The only one, yeah, and very, very few people were there. No more than a third of the number that were present here today. Tell me, what, uh, what's your reaction uh, having seen the first atomic detonation in history, the first nuclear detonation, and then the succeeding ones, and then this final one today? What? Well, my reaction, Grant, is really that you never see a second atomic blast. You always, it's always a first. No matter, I think, how many you see, you always have a new experience as though you had never seen it before. And you stand there and you gaze at it and you look at it and you say, am I seeing things? Am I dreaming? Is this real? Is this possible? Your senses tell you that it is, but when you think what there is in it, inside the bomb, is a very small amount of material, either plutonium, which is a man-made material, which doesn't exist in nature, or a natural material, which exists in nature in very small amount, called uranium-235. Now, the amount actually exploded is so small, the real amount we can't tell. But roughly, we'll say it's measured in pounds. Roughly, maybe 20 pounds, maybe 30 pounds, maybe even less. But then, around it, of course, have to be a lot of materials, much more, weighing much more than the actual explosion material, which is needed to produce the explosion at the greatest efficiency. Now, you can't ever get 100% efficiency, because you have to have what they call a minimum amount, a critical mass. Now, what happens inside is a chain reaction of neutrons, which are the smallest particles in nature, very small, and they start splitting the atoms. Now, in those atoms is an energy millions of times greater than there is in coal, let's say, or in gasoline, or in any other fuel that we know. That's, that's the, the energy that's that holds the, that's the... That's the energy that holds the nucleus of the atom together, which means really the energy that holds the universe together. 
because the universe is made of atoms, and if the atoms were not held together, there would be no universe, and there'd be no human beings, and no atomic bombs or anything. <laughs>